and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast, 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news, first thing in the morning. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Pilares. It's Friday, and the 49ers are entering the weekend with another win down. Lindsay, how does it feel to already be sitting at 3-0? and Yeah, just hearing the reactions from a lot of the players yesterday. Something to be celebrated, especially the manner in which the 49ers are winning. They've put up 30 points in all three of their games in 2023. These are 2019 levels of production that we're seeing. So there's certainly a nice momentum building in that locker room, but all of the players are very quick to say, there's 14 more games in the season and that's what they're really zeroing in on because that fast start it's great but you have to continue and keep that up in order to have the type of season that they're hoping to have yeah definitely after the game linebacker Fred Warner said the team's happy about the situation but they're not satisfied so a lot more to come from the team but in the team's home opener at Levi Stadium, the San Francisco 49ers defeated the New York Giants 30-12 to on Thursday Night Football. And Lindsay, before I go any further, 30 points again for the 49ers. They've scored exactly 30 points in every game now. Let's talk about how productive this offense has been. Yeah, you know, I think in that first half, the offense took a second to really get its groove going, right? This was a really good second half performance, I would say, by the San Francisco 49ers, even towards the back end of that second quarter. It was definitely a ramp up, um, but absolutely a very positive offensive performance, 30 points in three straight games. That's absolutely what you want to see. And then you have to take into account also that this game, Brandon Ayuk wasn't a part of it. So we saw guys like wide receiver, rookie wide receiver, Ronnie Bell, really step up. He caught his first touchdown pass of his pro career. And then you see rookie Jake Moody also just killing the kicking game. He remains perfect through three games. So a lot of production from a lot of places in order to get San Francisco to that magic number 30, I guess, in three straight games. You can maybe attribute the 49ers ramp up in production, perhaps because it was Thursday night football. They had a short week to rehab their bodies and turn things around. But for one guy who scored in every game now is running back Christian McCaffrey. He had a huge game on Thursday, reaching five thousand career rushing yards and he has also scored one or more touchdowns in 12 consecutive games which is the longest active streak of any NFL player it seems like he's breaking records every game isn't he yeah I mean when I look at the stats and the accolades that Christian McCaffrey has gathered up in these first three weeks of the season it's just it's crazy to see because the list is fairly long, right? So he entered this week as the NFL rushing yards leader, and he's also won back-to-back FedEx Ground Player of the Week awards. He hits that 5,000 career rushing yards mark in his 14th game as a San Francisco 49er. It's his 78th career game. And then, yeah, also just absolutely just no end in sight with that 12-game touchdown streak for him. Um, and I think what the funniest part of all of this was, was that Christian McCaffrey, I don't think realized that he hit that 5,000 career rushing yards benchmark. He was asked about it in the post game presser and then said, I had no idea. That's really cool. So I think that just a testament to the goal and mentality of this team. It's a selfless team. That's something we've heard a lot. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey, he never takes full credit of his touchdowns. He always attributes it to the rest of the offense. And even it's it's even prominent in his touchdown celebration, like we saw yesterday. He hands that football to one of his offensive linemen to spike it for him. So it's a true team effort for the run game there. And McCaffrey, he wasn't the only one active in the ground game yesterday and head coach Kyle Shanahan said ahead of the contest that the plan was to rotate him out so what did the run game exactly look like for the 49ers the run game against the Giants was definitely a tandem 
job by Christian McCaffrey and running back Elijah Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell actually did not see the field against the Rams in week two. So a definite substantial increase in his workload. He ended the day with 11 carries for 42 yards, and he also had three catches for two yards. His longest carry of the day was an 18-yard burst, and that was actually on the way to San Francisco's second touchdown scoring drive of the game. So he's becoming a an important piece of that 49ers run game. And that'll also help to keep Christian McCaffrey fresh throughout the season. As for the other players who helped the 49ers reach 30 points on Thursday, we saw touchdowns from Debo Samuel and Ronnie Bell. Like you mentioned, his first touchdown of his career and a toe tap touchdown at that. How did San Francisco's wide receivers fare without Brandon Ayuk? Yeah, I think Debo Samuel really said it best in his post game presser. It's, it's, it was just, oh, sorry. I think Debo Samuel really said it best in his post game presser. It was weird for him to not have Brandon Ayuk in the huddle and out there on the field with him. But the mentality of that receiving core was that we've got to pick up the slack in his absence. And again, I, I point to Ronnie Bell just because he played a very big factor in this game. He had that nine yard touchdown catch but also helped keep the 49ers second touchdown scoring drive uh, that ended in a Christian McCaffrey touchdown alive he caught a deflected pass who knows where that would have gone secured it down for a 15 yard gain and that's definitely one of the plays that to me sticks out from this game and then of course yes you've got Debo Samuel six receptions for 129 yards and a touchdown he also had George Kittle rack up the yak yards on a 29 yard gain um so you know you're seeing contributions from all over the place I'm looking at this list too Jawan Jennings he had a really big third down conversion so definitely a team effort to get this receiving game to where they wanted it to be on Thursday. Signature 49ers offense, right? Third and Jawan, Yak from George Kittle. I mean, Debo Samuel had his first 100-yard game. We just love to see it. But what we've also seen from the 49ers in these last three games is that it's not just one guy who's carrying the team to the win, and it's truly been a team effort, and the key to their success has been complimentary football. So let's talk a bit about the defense. They held the Giants to just 150 total yards, making it the fewest amount of yards allowed in a single game since 2017 and only 29 rushing yards. What made their performance so dominant? You know, I think we heard after the game from Nick Bosa that especially for that defensive front, it was one of the best performances they've had as a group so far. Uh, Just looking at the numbers, 23 total pressures. uh, And one of the biggest threats that everyone pointed to this week was Daniel Jones, the Giants quarterback, and making sure that he did not have a big day. He's a really mobile quarterback, and they limited him big time. Um, And really took away the rushing attack. Obviously, they were down without Saquon Barkley. Um, So a lot of things feeding into that. But really, like you said, a team effort. Defensive front was putting the pressure on Daniel Jones. And then at the end of the game, you see Talanoa Hufunga really seal the whole thing with that pick. We were kind of waiting to see who would get the interception because I think that's kind of become an expectation of the 49ers defense and it surely did come towards the end of the game. And we're three games in now. It's been a mix of games throughout the beginning of the season, but I'm curious, what did you learn about the 49ers after this win? I think what we're seeing through these first three games is that there are different recipes to success, right? For Especially in this game without Brandon Ayuk, you see other parts of the receiving core step up. You're seeing Nick Bosa start to find his groove. He got his first sack of the season last night. Then you see Javon Hargrave get his second take takedown. So a lot of different contributors from a lot of different places. And when the offense is taking a second to find its groove. The defense picks it up. It's a little bit of everything. And like you mentioned, it's all about playing complimentary football. I think this team is learning to do that and learning to just keep going at it. And eventually things are starting to fall their way. I think that second half really 
the 49ers were in control. Um, so yeah, different ways to win. And it's obviously working out 30 points in three straight games. All right, before we close out this episode, what does the injury report look like after this game? Yeah, thankfully a pretty short injury report. Uh, we saw wide receiver Debo Samuel uh, go down uh, for a second on the field. It ended up being a rib injury, but we did hear from him and he said he was fine. So going to go ahead and trust his uh, update on that one. And then linebacker Dre Greenlaw and linebacker Demetrius Flanagan fouls both suffered an ankle injury. Don't know to what extent, but likely we'll hear more about that today during Kyle Shanahan's call. Okay, well, that will do it for today. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining me in this episode. Don't forget to follow First and 10 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Be sure to turn on the notifications so you're in the know when we post any breaking news updates. And thank you, Faithful, for tuning in. Bye.